colour plays a significant role in any kind of visual communications. But what we're really striving for is accurate, consistent colour. And the way to start achieving that is under the edit menu, going down to colour settings. That's on the same place on a Mac and on a PC. When you left click on that, you're presented with kind of a bewildering array of uh, terminology and options in here. Essentially, for the most part, you'll be working with images that are composed of mixtures of red, green and blue called RGB. And that's usually for on-screen presentations. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow and black, and that will be for print based projects. So what this allows us to do is essentially tag our documents with a language of color, rather like when we go from one country to another and the local language changes so that we can communicate effectively, you ideally speak in the local language. And it's very similar with digital devices. They need to speak the same language of color to be able to communicate and be more precise about what your color looks like. The long and the short of that really is that when you come to this dialog box at settings at the top left hand side, click on the drop down menu. If you're working in Europe, then the best option would be to choose Europe Prepress 3. If you're working in North America, well, then you could choose North American Prepress 2 from the list. And in my case, I'm working in Europe, so I'll choose Europe Prepress 3. That will give you Adobe RGB for your RGB images and Coated Fogger 39 for your CMYK projects. These are best practice workflows, generally speaking, when you're working in Europe. You'd find an equivalent for that for the North American general purpose too. So when you open up images, it will synchronize and make sure that you are using the right kind of colored workspace to articulate and define colors in a visually identical way. The only thing I would add to this is that once you've picked that preset, go down to the lower half and turn off the checkboxes here. When it asks you if you want to be notified about copying and pasting, or if you're opening up a file, those three checkboxes when turned on, will provide a message that tells you that you're opening up a document that didn't match your color workflow, but it will manage it all the same. Or when you copy and paste, for example, well, that's great, but you don't need to be told that it's doing that. It will do it anyway. So rather than having to be bombarded with dialog boxes that you have to click OK to here, it will just do what we need it to do. You won't be told about it every single time, which gets quite tedious very quickly. Now, having done that, you notice that we have now technically customized the preset that we chose. If you wish to save this, well, then you can go across to save. It will then direct you to the correct folder. Notice in there, there is already what's called a color settings file, CSF. You can simply give this a name. If I call this GB color, go down to the bottom and click on save. You could put some comments in here. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm using my GB color workflow from there. So you can save them. It's not absolutely essential, but that is how we start to color manage all of our documents consistently. And I'll click OK.